Welcome to the Texas A&M College of Veterinary Medicine and Biomedical Sciences Peer Program's continuing video conference series. Today, Devin Smith, a third year veterinary student at the college, will be talking to you about how she got into vet school. She'll discuss the preparation she took during high school and college, as well as the interview process. Thank you for joining us today. Howdy, my name is Devin Smith. I am a third year veterinary student at Texas A&M University. And today I'll be talking to you about how I got into veterinary school. So first of all, do any of y'all have pets? Any pets? I have a pet. Yes, good. How many of you want to be veterinarians? Anybody, no vets? Doctors? Okay, we'll keep going then. I'm gonna get started with my presentation. I hope you guys enjoy. So to begin with, how did I get into veterinary school? And again, my name is Devin Smith. I've wanted to be a vet for as long as I can remember. I actually told my parents when I was three years old that I wanted to be an animal doctor. And everyone told me that I would change my mind repeatedly. And they were very, very wrong because as you can see, I am now in veterinary school and I am loving every minute of it. But if you do change your mind, that is completely okay. You have so much of your life ahead of you and you will go through stages and you will find new passions and that is completely fine. Find something you love and pursue it and that's what is important. So where did my inspiration to become a vet come from? Um, if anyone knows this show, Saboombafu, that was my favorite show growing up. Animal Planet, um, I really did cry when I found out that Steve Irwin passed away. That was a very devastating day in my life. Um, this show, quite funny, Zoo Books. Who had Zoo Books? I did. I loved my Zoo Books. All Things Bright and Beautiful by James Harriet. This is written by an English veterinarian and he wrote a series of five books documenting all of his veterinary adventures and it's quite inspiring. I recommend it. And then dog breed books and horse breed books. I was that nerdy little kid that bought dog breed books and memorized them, much to my parents' delight. And then I will show you the poster that inspired me the most. So this is the poster that was hanging in my high school science class. And it's quite funny because this poster is actually put on by the program I am speaking to you from right now. So I've gone full circle. Do any of you see a flying mammal? What is it? A bat. A bat, excellent, yes, it's a bat. <laughs> And now for my other inspiration, you guys might laugh, you boys may not appreciate this, but I was given this pet vet Barbie as a gift when I was a child. And it has been my inspiration and it continues to be. It sits on my desk at home. The most important thing that I did while preparing for veterinary school was keep a journal. So this is the journal I kept since I was in eighth grade. And every time I would do any sort of animal experience or volunteering, I would record it in this journal. And as you can see, it's quite full, but it helped me so much because later in your life, when you are applying to college and veterinary school, you will have to record every hour of volunteer service you've ever done and every hour of animal experience you've ever had. And if you have it in a book, it's much easier to go back and flip through. So now we're gonna look at what to record. So first of all, the name of the event, organization, and the location. List all the contact information. So if you work with a specific doctor, make sure to write his name, his email contact, and his phone number. The date and the number of hours you've worked, as well as a short description of the activity. So if you're working with pigs one day, right, I was working with swine. If you're working with horses, you were doing equine experience. That's also very important to determine if you want to do small animal or large animal. And here's an example, if you guys can look at that one. Event, volunteered at the Brazos Animal Shelter. Contact Dr. Larry Johnson, who happens to be my boss. The date and time and a short description. And that'll get you through vet school and through college. Just keep this journal, it's very important. All right, so the key to getting into college, to succeeding in life, and to getting into vet school is leadership and involvement. People wanna see that you're a very well-rounded person. Not that just you can make the grades, which is also important, but they want to see that you're involved. So some great examples of that would be FFA, Beta Club, volunteering, any of your student council programs. 
People want to see your involvement. But it is also important to make good grades. So here's an example for me. In high school, I played varsity volleyball. I was secretary of the FFA and a member of the wildlife team. I also competed in writing competitions and speaking competitions. Um, I was vice president of the beta club and vice president of the student council. Apparently, I couldn't hold a president position. And I graduated top 10% as a straight A student. So that is a good step to proceeding into college. And I did get my first choice college, which was excellent. So for high school summers, when you're just hanging out at home, instead of doing that, find somewhere that you can volunteer. So for example, I volunteered at the Brazos Valley Boarding Kennels, where I learned I spent all day long outside with dogs. And these were dogs that people brought to stay for a few days. And I learned so much about animal behavior. It was a lot of hard work, but it helped me for the future. I also volunteered at the Cameron Park Zoo. And if you are going to be a veterinarian or any profession that you would like to go into, you need to shadow first. So I wanted to be a vet, so what did I do? I called up some veterinarians in my hometown and I asked them if I could come shadow. And usually these professionals are very welcoming and they want to help you and they want to help you make a right decision about your future career. So branch out. It may be scary to make a phone call all by yourself, but it's very important. So do your research. You need to pick a college that has a good program for what you want to study or a great pre-vet program if you do want to become a veterinarian. And it's never too early to start researching. I started researching in eighth grade. That's a little bit early, but it really helped me because I knew what I wanted to do. Speak to advisors. You guys, don't forget that you can ask anyone for help, any adult. They're here to help you. That's their job. So approach them. Find a good fit for you and your personality. You may love a university and may have a great program, but if they don't fit your personality, you're not going to be happy there. So make sure you find a place that you can see yourself fitting into. Also, do applications early. So college applications for A&M, I believe, come out in August or September. Make sure that you've already been looking at that application and working on your essays. That's very important. And also, work hard. Don't give up your senior year. It's very easy to get senioritis, but keep working hard. So undergraduate life, I had four options for college. I had Baylor, Trinity, A&M, and TCU. Who do you guys think I picked? Well, I picked A&M, so gig them, and I never regretted it. So I came from a very small high school. I had 58 students in my high school class, which is very tiny. And then I came to Texas A&M, and I was blown away. My first class had 300 students in it. That was larger than in my entire high school, and it was very, very scary. But I put myself out of my comfort zone, and it became very fun for me. I really enjoyed interacting with people, and there's so many people that you could see every day. It was very neat. So, also for undergrad, these are some of the tips that I found helpful and that helped me get through my undergraduate career. I joined a sorority. I made a bunch of friends. I found a good church. I learned how to manage my time. That is very important because in high school, you have a set schedule. You're in class from 8 to 3 every day. When you get to college, your classes will be split up. You may have one 8 a.m. one day, you might have a 10 a.m. the next, and no one is there telling you to study. You have all the freedom in the world, but you have to make the time to study and work hard, but also make time for fun. You don't want to destroy yourself, but work hard, but also enjoy it. Undergrad is a lot of fun. Another important thing, you will realize in college you are not the smartest student anymore. I thought I was a genius, and then I got to college and realized I wasn't. I was more of the middle class. And that is completely fine. Just don't be scared to be that person and don't be scared to ask for help. Again, your professors, their job is to help you. So approach them. Do not be scared. So college extracurricular, that fun stuff. There's my sorority, Kappa Delta. I was also in the Biomedical Science Association. And they had a pre-med program and a pre-vet program. So find organizations that are going to help you with your future career. Um, I also led a Bible study. I played beach volleyball on the side. It was a great time. So find stuff that you enjoy. Don't make it all about being a veterinary student. Find stuff that is going to encourage you and keep you motivated. So vet school prereqs. There are tons. And make sure that you talk to your advisor every semester to make sure that you are following the right course. And by prereqs, I mean classes you need to take to become a veterinarian or to get into veterinary school. Currently, there are only 28 schools in the United States. And those are veterinary schools. So there's not many. So you do need to work hard because you're going, to, you're going to have to be very competitive to get in. So here's an example of some of the Texas A&M vet school prerequisites. 
So general biology, and some of you guys can AP out of that while you're in high school, and I highly recommend it. However, biology was my favorite course, so I love taking it in college. Some other people would disagree with me on that. Um, microbiology, genetics, which is also a great class. General animal science, which will learn cattle breeds, horse breeds, pig breeds, depending on if you want to do large or small. So those are just some examples of what you might have to take to get into veterinary school. And again, every vet school is going to differ, so make sure the ones you are applying to, you've met with your advisor and you know what they require. So here's again some examples of what I did. This is my freshman year summer. I became the first intern that the Aggieland Humane Society had ever had, and that was out of my sheer will. I went and said, hi, I'd like to be your intern. They've never had one before and I made myself a position. So you have to get out of your comfort zone, and if you want something, you have to work hard to get it, and stay determined. If they say no, keep coming back. Not in a creepy way, just keep coming back, <laughs> in a nice way. So here I am, um, this is a little kitty, and then to the right, you'll see a little heart that says Buster and Devin, and I was working at an adoption event, and I met this sweet little dog, and I fell in love with him, and people would ask to adopt him, and I would make up excuses, like, oh, he'll be too big, you don't want him. And so Buster ended up coming home with me, and now he's my big 105 pound dog, and I love him very much. So you get to meet some, you might meet the love of your life while you're in vet school or an undergrad, as I did with Buster. Um, I also became a pooper scooper at the Texas a and Vet Hospital, because if you want to be a veterinarian, you have to start at the bottom. You're not going to get paid a lot. You're going to sometimes hate your job because y'all poop is nasty. But if you want to be a vet, you have to do the dirty work first to get to the top. And that way, a lot, of more, a lot more people will respect you because they know you have worked hard. You didn't just skip right ahead to the vet part. So don't be afraid to scoop poop. And this was my sophomore year summer. I have a passion for exotic animals, and that's like zoo animals. So I have some family members in Omaha, Nebraska, which you guys might think not a very exciting place. It's wonderful. They have the number two zoo in the nation. So I got to intern there in their Madagascar department. And if you guys aren't aware, Madagascar is the only home and the only place you will find lemurs. So, here's my little example. This is my favorite lemur, and if you guys have seen Zaboombafu, you know that this is the lead lemur from that show. It is called a cockerel safaka, and it is my favorite, and we had two of them at the Omaha Zoo, and I got to sit and train them every day. And their names were Crispus and Tom. It was wonderful. But again, that was something that no one told me about. I had to find that on my own. So you need to go out there, and if you want to do something, look it up. Email people, call people, make connections for yourself. People aren't going to do it for you. So my junior year summer, I decided I wanted to do something else different, so I started working at an aviary. And the whole summer, I got to raise baby birds. So from that little, you see that little pink guy that looks like a velociraptor? They started out like that, and I had to hand feed them every day, every four hours, and they turned into these cute little green things. So it was a great experience. I absolutely adored it. And it was another fun thing to add to my resume. So more jobs that I did in undergrad that helped me out. Again, I joined an aviary. I became a lab technician, and that was dirty work. All I had to do was help clean instruments, clean the lab, make sure everything was up to date. But then eventually, with time, I got to go interact with the birds, and they asked me to do dissections, and I got to know a lot of doctors, and that really helped me when I was needing reference letters for veterinary school. I also became a tour guide, which, believe it or not, I was very shy in high school, and when I got to college, I realized that getting, being shy wasn't going to get me very far. So I became very outgoing, I got out of my comfort zone, and I absolutely adore it. And now here I am, standing in front of you guys, I don't even know how many of you are out there, and that can be very frightening, but I love it. I love talking about what I love, and this is my passion. So go out there and get out of your comfort zone. All right, so how did I do all of that stuff? And as you can see, this emu is very scared. I did a lot of things. So I had a goal. I worked hard, and I kept a schedule, a very strict schedule. I was persistent. I had to get over my shyness, like I mentioned before. I asked for help, and I was curious and creative. If I wanted to do something and that position wasn't there, I made that position. Or I talked to people I knew who could make that position for me. So keep working hard. What makes a good vet school candidate? Because I can tell you all my formula, I can tell you someone else's formula, but what it comes down to is your own formula. So I'm gonna give you some guidelines that might help you, but you never know. Just keep working hard, do what you think will make you a good vet student. I'm just gonna give you some ideas. So 
good science comprehension. If you hate science, that school's probably not the best for you. All right, compassion for animals. That is very important. You're gonna be working with animals for the rest of your life. So you need to have compassion for them, but do not forget you also need to have compassion for people because animals do not talk and they usually come in with a person. They don't walk into the vet clinic on their own. So you need to be understanding and sympathetic and know how to communicate with humans. All right, high GPA. This is important. I know I said it's not all about grades and it isn't. They wanna see that you're well-rounded, but grades are important. So you need to continue to study, ask for help, go to tutoring, whatever you need to do. Strong work ethic, determination, as I mentioned, be persistent, people skills, high GPA and well-rounded. So those are some good potential characteristics of a good veterinary student. Statistics for Texas A&M Vet School. This is a little preview of how many men and women are in each class. Um, for my class, we have 32 males and about 100 females. So it's very predominantly female. So for all you boys out there, get into vet school. We need more males. Um, most of the students at Texas A&M are from Texas. If you do want to come from out of state, it is more difficult because it is very competitive and I believe they only give about 10 spots to out of staters. So which vet school do you want to go to? This is important to realize. Um, my only option was Texas A&M. That's all I applied to because my family is here and that was important to me. So you have to consider things like that. You have to consider that each vet school will have different prerequisites. So A&M's uh, previous classes you need to take are different from Colorado University. A lot of them are very similar, but some are not. If it is an out-of-state school, like I said, it is harder to get into and it will be more expensive and vet school is already very expensive. I'm just going to tell you that right away. However, with grants, with loans, you will make it. You will be fine. You'll have to pay off stuff when you get out of school, but everyone has to do that now, so it's fine. Just join the club. And how many schools are you going to apply to? This can also be expensive. I only applied to A&M and it probably cost me around $500, $500 after you take the GRE and the other classes. So. Beginning the application process, again, like you're applying to undergrad, you need to start early. So my application took me an entire summer. You do not want to start that application a week before it's due. The entire application is online, so again, your handy little notebook pictured on this screen will help you because it will have all of your hours and your experiences written down for you. They ask for every bit of animal experience and volunteering you've ever done. You will also need documentation and transcripts from every high school and college you've attended. So even if you took like a summer class at a community college, you're gonna need that transcript. So give yourself time to collect all those things. And again, all this can take quite a while to track down, so start early, I cannot stress that enough. Keep on track. So if you go to the website where you will be doing your GRE and the application process, they have a calendar of the events that you need to keep track of. So when you need to have your GRE scores in by, when you need to have your transcript in by. And it, it gives you an idea, so keep up to date on that. Just don't put it to the side and forget about it. So the important big test that you have to take to get to veterinary school is called the GRE. And I have heard that it is easier than, than the MCAT and I am okay with that. So for the GRE, this is the standardized test required by all students applying to veterinary schools in the US. There are GRE classes you can take, or if you learn better on your own, you can purchase a book and teach yourself, which is what I did, which may or may not have been a good idea. Make sure you register for your test at least two months in advance. So again, if you wait until two weeks before your application is due, you're out of luck. Make sure you start at the beginning of the summer and have an idea of when you want to take these tests. Also, if you don't test well, then you might want to plan on taking the test twice, so give yourself time for that. I took the test first, hated my score, took it again a few weeks later, did much better. It just takes me a little while. I have some uh, anxiety when it comes to testing and that's completely fine. I'm in vet school and I'm loving it and I'm making it through tests so if I can do it, I promise y'all can do it. Also, the next step is to get an interview. So after you submitted your wonderful application with all of your things that you've written down in your journal, your good essays, and then you've taken the GRE, your next mission is to get that interview. So the interview is the second step in the process. So the interview process. So I actually got my letter in December and I was very nervous because I applied as a junior in undergrad. I got my email and I was walking home through the parking lot and I said, all right, I'm just gonna check it. I'm just gonna be gutsy and I'm gonna check it. And y'all, I wasn't expecting to get an interview, but I opened that email and 
Thankfully, they had granted me an interview, and it was scheduled for, get this, Friday, January the 13th. So my vet school interview fell on Friday the 13th. So I don't know if that was a bad omen or a good omen, but it ended up working out very well for me. I just happened to be a little nervous. So for the interview, you need to dress very professional. I recommend pulling your hair back. It's always better for them to see your face and all of your expressions. It also prevents you from playing with your hair and just tossing it like I'm doing right now. That's probably not a good idea. Also, you're gonna wanna wear something either black or navy light colored, nothing flashy. You don't want to come in there wearing hot pink like Elle Woods. That's not going to get you a good spot. They need to see that you're very professional. You also need to work on your communication skills. So, things for the interview that you need to remember is there's no right or wrong answer. They're going to ask you questions and scenarios that you have to think through. They want to hear your thought process. So this is how it worked at A&M. It's not the same for every school. But there were six different stations. So you came in with a group, and then they split you up. And you would go to the outside of each of these rooms, and there would be a scenario on the door. And you had time to read the scenario and think through it. You got two minutes. And then you would enter the room. And guys, I don't want to scare you, but it was frightening. But once you just kind of own it and calm down a little bit, it's really not bad because it's you talking to these people. And that's what you're going to have to do the rest of your life. So get comfortable with it. So you'd walk into the room. There would be two doctors sitting there. And they would say, have you read this scenario? And I'd say, yes. And they'd say, now tell us how you would respond to this scenario. So I would take them through my thought process and say, well, considering this, I would think this. And then I would say, but considering this, I would also think of this. However, then I would have to tie it all together and give them an answer. And they will question you. They will say, are you sure? Are you sure? And you just own your answer. And if they ask you more questions, you continue to own your answer. And you just look at them and you speak clearly. Don't avoid eye contact like this. Make sure you look them in the eye. That is a big mistake in interviews is not to look people in the eye. So maintain eye contact, smile. You can use your hands. I do that a lot and that's important. It gives expression, it gives a little personality. But again, own your answer. And even if they, they are not allowed to show expression. So if they're not smiling at you, it doesn't mean you're doing bad. Just go with it, own it. You're, in vet, you're about to be in vet school. You're trying to get into vet school. Just. Be comfortable, it's okay. So you, the first room, if it's bad, you have five other rooms to go through. So, it's a little frightening, but I promise it's okay. So after my interview, I was a little stressed out, went home, watched some TV, I was fine. So then the waiting process begins. So after your interview, you have a couple months to wait until they tell you if you're really in or you're not, which is even harder to wait for than the interview. Because you're like, oh, I got this far, am I gonna keep going or am they, are they gonna cut me off? So, waiting game begin. You're gonna wait until March or April. Be patient. Pick up a new hobby, guys. Go make do a puzzle. I don't know, write a book. <laughs> Maybe study for your other classes. But try not to dwell on it because it'll drive you crazy. All right, so um, I had a crazy story happen to me. Um, I waited and I waited for my interview and I was so nervous. And I was at a dinner with some friends, and I was with my friend Lauren, who we actually went all through undergrad together, and her mother called her and said, um, Lauren, you got into veterinary school. And I said, oh my gosh, Lauren, great job. And then my mom called me, and I was like, oh gosh, here we go. So I answered the phone, and my mom says, the first thing she says is, don't get excited. And so I'm thinking, oh no, I'm not in veterinary school. So. <laughs> I was a little bummed and I went home, maybe cried a little bit, um, but she told me I was number 16 on the waiting list. And that's a pretty high number. There is a waiting list for veterinary school and typically at A&M they only go up to six or seven. So after I got 16 on the waiting list, I didn't think I was going to veterinary school. And that was very hard for me because this was my dream, but I also knew that I applied as a junior. I applied early. My chances of getting in were not great. However, the day before my 21st birthday on May 3rd, I got a phone call from the veterinary school. I was just about to head to tutoring for my biochem test, which I was not looking forward to, and I got a phone call and I said hello, and they said, hi, this is so-and-so from the veterinary school, and I thought, oh no, they're calling to tell me I didn't get in. So I said, okay, what's, what's going on? And they said, well, we'd like to inform you that there is a points discrepancy in your application and we'd like to offer you a spot in the vet school class of 2016. And I flipped out and I bent down and I thought, oh my gosh, is this real? 
And I even said that in the phone, and the lady said, this is not a joke, you're in veterinary school, and my heart just soared, because this is a dream I've wanted since I was three years old, and it finally happened, and I am so thankful. That was the best birthday present a girl could ever receive. So, um, <laughs> oddly enough, I called my parents and told them that I had gotten into veterinary school, and <laughs> they surprised me with a trip to Hawaii. And apparently, they didn't think I was going to get into veterinary school. Like I said, people will doubt you. And so they had originally planned that when I didn't get into veterinary school, they would say, well, actually, we're taking you to Hawaii. So maybe I'd get over that disappointment and be excited about going to an island. But I did get in, and they were like, whoa, we're still going to Hawaii. And I said, yes, we are. So I went to Hawaii, and it was a great trip. I would never been. Um, I absolutely loved it, and it was a great vacation before that school started. So I got in, now what do I do? And I can tell y'all, no matter what you do in undergrad, you will never be prepared for veterinary school. It's fun, it's hard, it's stressful, but you are working for something that you've always worked for. So just remember that. And whenever I get discouraged, I think back to that day that I got that phone call and the excitement that I felt and the tears that I cried, tears of happiness, and the people I called and how happy I was. And you have to focus on the joy. You have to remember why you're doing this. Not that you're spending hours studying and hours in the anatomy lab. You have to focus on the good stuff because eventually you will graduate and you will become a doctor and you will do what you love for the rest of your life. So, a little preview of what to expect in veterinary school. Four years of hard work and I emphasize the hard work. Um, this past semester or this past year, I took 23 hours of classes. That is a lot of class and that's a lot of sitting in the classroom. But you get to spend it with people that you really love and enjoy. So I have 130 classmates and I love each and every one of them. Sometimes it's a bit harder to work with some than others, but it's a great time and you make some of the best friendships you've ever had. Um, also kind of exciting, so when you get into veterinary school, you go in with all ages. So it's not people that I'm 23 years old, there's not people all your age. So there may be people who are 40 who maybe were a lawyer before they came to veterinary school or there may be people who are married and having children. And so it's very neat to get to experience these different parts of life with your classmates. And it really opens your eyes to the world around you because in undergrad, you're not really seeing a lot of people having children, being married. So it's very neat to have different ages and people are very helpful. When you're in undergrad, people can be very competitive. Obviously, you're competing for the same spots and the same programs. However, when you get into vet school, everyone is in vet school and they're all trying to help you graduate. So if people make study materials, they share them with the entire class and you're there and you're a team and it is a great, great experience. And now I'm gonna show you a few pictures of um, vet school life. These are all from my first year. I should have added some from my second year. So here's a picture, the one in our blue, lovely coveralls. So this is before anatomy lab and we got to dissect horses and cows and goats in this class, so this is us before. Um, and you smell really bad because formaldehyde is not a good scent. Um, but you all hang out together and it's really fun. You can see we wear rain boots because it gets a little messy in there. And then to the other, in the other picture, um, we like to have fun in vet school. So studying is hard, but it's also important to get a physical exercise as well as a mental exercise. So we have extracurricular sports. Um, I was on the volleyball team and the football team, and this is us holding up our fingers, saying we we're number one. That's not actually true, we actually lost that game, but we felt like winners, so that's what's important. Um, here's a picture of me palpating a cow for the first time. I was so excited, I don't know if you can tell on my face, but I'm just like in heaven, and I realized most people wouldn't find that heaven, but when you love animals and you wanted to work with them your whole life, this is really exciting, and this is also extracurricular. So, People will send out emails in the vet school saying, hey, we have 10 cows we'd like to palpate. What vet students would like to assist us? And so you can volunteer. And yes, that is cutting into your studying time, but it's really important to get that second education. You can't just focus on the books all the time. You have to remember that you're going to be in the field. You're going to be working. So get that experience. And here's a picture of me before one of my tests. Those are all my study materials. And I'm smiling, but I didn't feel like smiling in this picture because I was very stressed out, but I did well on that test, so it was fine. But this is just an example of how many materials you will have to go through, and that's only for one test. So, so what exactly do veterinarians do? We do a lot, and a lot of people think, oh, we just play with animals all day. That is so far from the truth. Our primary purpose is to serve society and be guardians of animal welfare. Isn't that a cool statement? Guardians of animal welfare. That makes me feel pretty cool. 
Um, we deal with, primarily with health and disease of vertebrates, including man, so a zoonotic disease, meaning that an animal can pass it to us. A great example is rabies, which is my favorite disease to learn about. Another job for vets is prevention. So that's preventing um, flea and tick infestations by treating your animal monthly. Um, we also diagnose and we treat. Um, here's more of what we do. Prevent disease, zoonotic, foodborne, foreign and emerging, which is really exciting. Um, diagnose, treat some more. And here's some private practice areas you can go into. Small animal, large animal, exotic. Um, specialized private practice and you guys can ask me what I want to do but I have no idea. I came into veterinary school wanting to work with exotics and lemurs and then I got turned on to the idea of large animal and I love horses and I love cows and I even like chickens which is really weird. Um, I also love other birds. I have a pet bird named Captain. Um, I love dogs and cats so really guys I have no idea what I, what I want to do. I just know I want to be a vet. And so it's funny because your whole life you want to be a vet and then you get into veterinary school and you're thinking, oh my goodness, there's so many things in veterinary school you can do. So I'm still working on that. I'll get back to you when I decide what I want to do. Some examples of specialization include anesthesiology, surgery, zoo medicine, which is what I also like. And then again, guys, veterinary medicine is everywhere. So even if you don't know what kind of animals you want to work with, there's so many options once you get into veterinary school. You can be a professor, you can travel around and talk about emerging disease, you can work for food companies. So, you can work with your basic pets, everybody loves their pets, right? I do. Your food, I'm a big fan of chicken nuggets, this is what got me through undergrad, and people, Tyson needs vets too, They have some, someone has to check their chickens, so. Um, your health, it's important that if you have a pet, you know what diseases and things you can get from your pet, because some of those things are really nasty. And also your safety. Dog bites are the number one public health issue in the United States. So not only do we care for animals, we also care for humans. And with that, that is it. So if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Please tell us your name and what school you're from and ask Devin a question. Hello. All right. Um, Jade, I'm from Siren. Um, was it hard choosing between four different schools? So the question was, was it hard choosing between four different colleges? And the answer is yes, it was very difficult. Um, I went on tours for every campus, and the ones that I really liked, I went on two tours. Yes? Um, I'm Elliot from Siren. Uh, how did you handle uh, being like scared when you were like on the waiting list? Like, How did you handle that? Okay. So the question was, how did I handle being on the waiting list? And the truth is, I didn't handle it very well at first. Um, every day I would go to class in undergrad and people, some of my friends would actually be in veterinary school or have gotten their acceptance letter. And it's very discouraging because that's what I wanted and it was hard not to be jealous of these people that were already in. But I did pick up a new hobby um, and I studied harder. I did better in classes and then I actually went on a mission trip and I kind of got right with God there and realized that um, if I wanted to be a vet, it was up to him and not me. And when I got back is when I got my acceptance letter. So that was very important for me. Um, my name is Bell and I'm from Siren. Um, how suspenseful was the waiting list? Caleb and Ken. Okay. Uh, the question was how suspenseful was the waiting list on a scale of one to 10? And I would choose 11. <laughs> um, it is very suspenseful. But again, I look back at all that worrying I did, and I realized it was very silly. You know, worrying isn't going to change anything you do. So try not. It's hard not to do it. But again, do something that you love. And just, you know, if you get into vet school, fine. If you don't, apply again. Just keep being persistent. Um, Luke Berman from Owen with me. Uh, what was the hardest part about college? <laughs> Okay, um, the question was, what is the hardest part about college? And for me, that was realizing oh, I wasn't the smartest student. <laughs> so I was valedictorian in my class, and then I get to college, and I was struggling. I was making C's on tests, and I was panicking. I said, oh, maybe I'm not supposed to be in college. What am I doing here? But that's when I had to realize that sometimes you have to ask for help, and that's very important to realize that because you can't do it on your own. You have to ask help from other people. 
So that's when I started going to free tutoring or going to talk to my professor, and my grades started going up, and I asked people in class for help. So don't be proud. Don't be, yeah, don't be prideful. Ask for help, make friends, talk to your professors. That's their job. Hey, another question. Hi, my name is Stella. Um, I wanted to ask, how, what would you be doing if you were selected out of the waiting list? What would you be doing right now? Okay. Like, what do you think your career would have been? All right, so the question was, what would I be doing if I wasn't taken off the waiting list and gotten into that school? Um, because I applied a year early, I actually had a whole other year of school to complete if I didn't get into veterinary school. So if I wouldn't have gotten in, I would have completed my senior year, and then I would have applied again, probably. However, I did have a couple backup plans. Um, I thought about maybe traveling for a year, um, working at a zoo again, getting more experience, and deciding if that's really something I wanted to go into, or maybe I wanted to do research for a while. So there's lots of options in the medical department, and I was a biomedical science major, so I could have gone and worked for a drug selling representative, I could have gone to a pharmacy school. There were a lot of options, but I knew that my dream was veterinary medicine, and I was gonna keep working at that until it happened. But it is important to have a backup plan. Hey, I believe we had a question from Siren again. Um, Alexa from Siren, um, do you have to choose between from like different animals, like large animals, exotic, or a certain group to help or something? Uh, the question was, do you have to choose animals to work on? And the answer is, you don't. So when you apply to veterinary school, they are going to ask you what kind of animals you'd like to work on, but that's not set in like. I can't think of a word, set in stone, <laughs> there we go. Um, it's not set in stone, so you can change your mind as many times as you want to. And I'm about to go into my third year of veterinary medicine, and obviously I have no clue what kind of animals I wanna work on, but you are allowed to choose electives. So some of the electives your third year include beef nutrition, so working with cattle. Um, you can do small animal behavior, you can do feline medicine, and you can pick as many of those electives as you want to try to narrow down what you might want to do. And then as a fourth year veterinary student, you do have to pick, you can say small, large, mixed, or you can do an alternative pathway. Say perhaps you wanted to go into a pathology residency. Um, for me, I will probably end up choosing mixed because that way I can get the best of both worlds. So you do have to choose eventually, but there's so many things you can do. So after you graduate veterinary school, if you decide, man, I really wanna work with horses, you can actually go to continuing education classes and become a horse vet. So if you change your mind, it's fine. Just pick something you really think you might like, and if you're not sure, pick mixed and work from there. When you applied for the schools, oh, how did you know to apply for them? Like, I don't know. How did you know that you wanted to go for those specific schools? Okay. The question was, how did I know I wanted to apply to those specific schools? Those specific schools being Baylor, A&M, Trinity, and TCU. And honestly, I knew I wanted to get out of my hometown. And it may sound kind of mean, but I wanted to expand my horizons. So I picked places that were further away. Um, my family is all from Iowa, so I have no family in Texas, and I had no idea what schools to apply to. And honestly, I didn't like Aggies. I thought they were a cult and loud and obnoxious. And now look at me, I'm one of them, and I love it. <laughs> but I applied to TCU, I thought, ooh, fancy, it's a private school. I applied to Baylor, and I thought again, ooh, fancy, I'll be private. And then Trinity, I absolutely loved, and I felt so high and mighty, and I loved Trinity, and I loved the campus, but Trinity only has 3,000 students. And I knew that if I wanted to expand my horizon, I was gonna have to put myself into an area I was not comfortable with, and after I went on a couple tours at A&M, I fell in love with the campus. I fell in love with the people, and I knew I could find a spot here, and that's exactly what I did. And I don't regret that decision for a day. In fact, that was the best decision of my life so far. So pick schools that you think you could fit in with, talk to other students, maybe seniors that are graduating, what they're applying to, go visit them. Go take a tour, maybe go stay in their dorm for a week. See if you like the campus and the environment, because it will vary between schools. Is that okay? We have a 
question from someone in our studio. Okay, you, you mentioned an interview process. Right. You mentioned a, a scenario. What is a scenario? Okay. Uh, and also you mentioned uh, in your application you had an essay. What do you mean by that? Okay, so the questions were what kind of scenarios did I have to go through for the interviews and also what type of essays. So you will have to write essays for your undergrad college applications and you will have to write essays again when you get into veterinary school. And I can't remember all three of them, but I know one was write about basically why you want to become a veterinarian. And that is so cliche to ask, but you need to make sure that when you answer that essay, you make it unique to you. And your answer better not be, I love animals. Because everybody love it, loves animals. How many people do you meet that say, oh, I hate animals? So you need to make sure that your answer is unique to you. And basically show them why you're special, why you're different, you need to set yourself apart. I think the other essay was explaining these situations that might um, change people's opinion of you. So if you made a bad grade, but your parents got divorced that semester, that's an opportunity in your essay to explain, I did make a scene undergrad, but my parents were getting divorced, and kind of explain why those things might, might have happened to you. As far as the interview goes, they're going to give you a broad-based scenario, and it's kind of scary because obviously you're not a veterinarian yet. But again, it's not a right or wrong answer. They want to see you pick an opinion and stick with it. So I'm not supposed to share these, but I'll give an example. From what I had was, what, how do you feel about animal research? And my example, or my answer, I actually rocked that room, was that animal research is a necessary evil. Because without animal research, humans would be dying left and right. So although these animals sacrifice their life, they're not only helping to save humans, they're also saving more of their species. So again, pick an opinion, stick with it, and it'll be broad questions like that. Or maybe it might be someone brings in a dog and says, I just want to euthanize it. I don't like it anymore. What do you do as a veterinarian? And you need to, under, you need to be able to communicate what you would do in that position. You mentioned what the girls should wear in the interview process. How about the guys? The guys. Okay, so from what I remember, the guys for the interview process wore nice pants and probably a button-up shirt or even a suit coat. I'm not a guy. I don't remember very much, and there's only a few of them remember. So, But wear something fancy but light colors again. Blues are great. Blues and blacks are perfect for interviews. And speak clearly and make eye contact. One last question from Siren. Um, what's your opinion on purple for interviews? Um, my opinion on purple for interviews, it depends on the shade of purple. I would think a dark purple is okay, but maybe not like a flashy dancer purple or like violet. Make sure it's a dark, almost navy purple. All right, thank you, Siren, and all of our other schools who joined us today. If you'd like to know more about the PEER program, you can visit our website at peer, P-E-E-R, dot T-A-M-U, dot E-D-U. On our website, you can find various resources for your classroom or to prepare you as you look into a career in the field of veterinary science. Thanks again for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you at our next video conference. Bye! Bye!